This video demonstrates the standard operating procedure with respect to the packed bed column of the Unit Operations Laboratory at Lafayette College. Operation of the packed bed requires standard personal protection equipment when working in the open bay area of the Unit Operations Laboratory, including a lab coat, a hard hat, safety glasses, long pants, and closed-toed shoes. In order to prevent safety hazards with the fan belt, long hair must be tied up and worn under the hard hat and loose clothing, such as scarves or drawstrings on a hooded sweatshirt, should not be worn. Earplugs can also be worn for noise protection. Heat gloves should be worn when adjusting the steam valves, and care should be taken when opening the low-pressure steam valve. To begin, ensure that valve FHV143 at the top of the column is open to prevent column pressurization. Then, turn on the compressor by pulling the switch on the Westinghouse control box up and pressing the start button. Use the Venturi meter, FHV126, to control the airflow into the column. The flow rate is measured by the pressure drop across the Venturi meter, displayed by the magnet helix indicator PI125 and manometer PI124. To determine the pressure drop across the dry column, adjust FHV126 to the desired set point, read off PI125, and read the column pressure drop on PI144 and 145. Before supplying water to the system, First set valve FHV119 to point downwards in order to divert water into the drain. Open valve FHV112 to supply the water, then open valves FHV113 and FHV115 to allow water to flow to the drain. Use FHV115 to control the water flow rate. For more information on how to calibrate the rotometer, FC117, please reference the video on the pump's apparatus located on the Lafayette CHBE YouTube channel. Turn valve FHB119 so that it points up in order to divert flow to the top of the column. Ensure that valve FHV148 at the bottom of the column is open so that water may drain out. Use valve FHV148 to maintain the water level between the markings on the bottom of the column. This may require constant adjustment of valve FHV148. It is helpful to have one person dedicated to this task of maintaining the water level. In the case of water going above the top marking, Valve FHV-134 should be opened immediately to drain the air inlet line and prevent water from entering the compressor. Data reading should not be taken if the water level goes below the bottom green line. To supply steam to the heat exchanger, wear insulating gloves and slowly open valve FHV-116, turning the valve a few degrees every 15 seconds. Open valve FHV-111 to allow steam to enter the heat exchanger. Then open valve FHV114 to send water through the heat exchanger. Manipulate both FHV114 and FHV113 to achieve the desired water temperature, as shown on TI118. It is suggested to use FHV114, the hot water supply, to get within 5 degrees of the desired set point, then use FHV113, the cold water supply, to reach the precise set point. When adjusting temperature, the flow rate is likely to change slightly. Correct this with valve FHV115. Adjusting the temperature also requires patience, as there is a natural time delay in the adjustment of valves and achieving the output temperature. TI-118 should be constantly monitored to prevent temperatures from exceeding 80 degrees Celsius, leading to unsafe operating conditions. Once the air flow rate, water temperature, and water flow rate are set, record the pressure drop across the column for PI-144 and 145. Wear heat gloves for FHB-144 because it will heat up and consider wearing them for FHV115 as the metal parts match the water temperature. To determine whether or not flooding conditions exist for a given packing, increase the air flow rate to a maximum value using FHV126. Slowly increase the water flow rate using FHV115 and observe the column for liquid holdup. If these conditions exist, record the conditions at which they occur. If flooding conditions are found, Decrease the air flow rate and increase the water flow rate to a maximum. Then increase the air flow rate to determine the ranges over which flooding occurs. The column should not be operated over flooding conditions. To shut down the packed bed, close FHV126, press the stop button, and turn off the Westinghouse switch to halt the air supply. Close FHV111 and FHV116 to turn off the steam supply. Turn FHV119 so that it points downwards. Then, close valves FHV112, 113, 114, and 115 to turn off the water supply. 
drain any water that may remain at the bottom of the column using FHV148 and leave this valve open to dry the column. In case of an emergency, press the stop button on the Westinghouse control box and turn off the Westinghouse switch. Close valve FHV116 to shut off steam supply to the column. To learn more about the equipment in the Unit Operations Laboratory, watch the related videos on the Lafayette CHPE YouTube channel.